There are a lot of different ways to visualize progress in Excel. I recently made this post on eight different types of progress charts, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at the steps chart. I'm gonna explain what it is, when to use it, and how to build it. So the steps chart is really just a simple chart that displays progress towards a goal when that progress is measured in steps or milestones. Now, when you might wanna use it, I have a few examples in this workbook here. Uh, the first one is a checklist. So here on this sheet, I have these check boxes, and as you check the check boxes for this specific task list, the steps chart displays that progress here. Another option is if you're doing any types of exams or assessments, or expense reports in Excel. Here, if your employees are filling out a report and you just wanna display the progress, you can do that right up here at the top as they fill out the report. So there are a lot of different uses for this type of uh, steps chart. I'm curious to know what you'll be using it for, so leave a comment below and let us know. And at the end of this video, I'll explain the setup for these specific examples. All right, so let's go ahead and build out our steps chart. Now, before I begin, I should mention that I'll make this file available for free download, and I'll put a link in the description below so you can download it and follow along. So I'm here on the step sheet, which contains our final product, but we're actually gonna go over to the steps follow along sheet to build out the chart. And the first thing we need is the source data. And we're going to use an Excel table for this. And the reason we're gonna do that is to make the chart dynamic. So we can add or delete steps in the future. So I'm gonna select here from uh, J2 down to L7. We'll go to the insert tab and choose table. Keyboard shortcut is control T. And here we'll just uh, hit OK. And so that's added this Excel table. Now, if you haven't used Excel tables yet, I do have a separate video that explains Excel tables in detail, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. So in our table here, we just need some formulas. The first column, we're going to have our step value, which is just a list of numbers from one to however many steps we have. And for this, we're going to use a formula. I'm just gonna type equals, the, use the row function, I'll tab into that, and then I'll close parentheses on that. So that's gonna return the current row number. Then I'm gonna type minus, and I'm gonna use the row function again, and this time I'm going to reference the header cell, so just select the header cell close the parentheses there and hit enter, and that's going to return this list of values, just a sequence of values, taking the current row number minus the header row number to return the result. Next, we need the gray column. So we'll just type gray here. This is for the gray bars in the background. And for this, we just need a list of one. So I'm gonna type equals here and then the number one and hit enter. That'll copy down, we'll get a list of ones. And then finally, we need the complete column, and this is for the color. So we'll type complete there. For this, we're just gonna use a simple if formula. So I'm gonna type equals if. Now, if, if you haven't used the if function yet, I also have a separate video on this and I'll put a link in the description below to that. For our logical test, we're gonna select the step in this uh, cell here, so the current row. We're gonna say that's less than or equal to, and then we're gonna select this cell here, which complete contains the number complete. And I'll hit F4 on the keyboard to make that an absolute reference. So as the formula is copied down, that reference doesn't change. Uh, we'll type a comma now, and for the value of true, we wanna return a one, comma, for the value of false, we wanna return an NA error. So I'm gonna type NA, we'll tab into that, and then we'll just close the parentheses on that, close the parentheses again on if, and hit enter, and that's going to return this list of either ones or NA errors. Now, the reason for that is if we jump back over to our steps sheet here and the chart, the gray column here just has a list of one. So that's gonna return all of these markers here. This is a line chart, which I'll explain in just a minute. And this is gonna return all of these uh, gray values here. And the complete column is only gonna return the green values or whatever color you use when there's a one here. If there's an NA error, Excel will not display those values in the chart. Essentially, it's just a blank and you won't see any green values here. So that's how we get these steps complete and incomplete to display the progress. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and build out the chart. The first thing we're gonna do is just select these two columns here, the gray and complete column. We're gonna go up to the insert tab here and for under line charts here, we're going to choose the line chart with markers. So we'll just select that. And as you can see, that's drawn out this chart here, which is actually pretty close to what we need. We really just need to do uh, some formatting to clean this up. And the first thing we're going to do, we really don't need the, a few of the items here. So we're gonna remove the legend and we'll keep the uh, axes for now, although we're going to remove those in the future. What we're going to do is go to the format tab here 
and then I'm going to choose the gray series. This is just an easy way to select the gray series. Of course, you can select on the chart, and then I'm gonna hit the format selection. Keyboard shortcut is Control-1, and that's gonna bring up the task pane over here, and the first thing we're gonna do is go to the fill and line options here, and for line, we wanna say solid line. So we'll change this from automatic to solid. For the color, we're going to choose the gray color. So this is gonna just be a light gray color, and then the width for this line, we're gonna uh, beef it up to about 10 points. So we'll go ahead and hit enter there. As you can see, the line over here has gotten a lot wider. The next thing we need to do is modify the marker. And for the marker options, we're gonna choose built in. We'll leave it as the circle option here, just the default. For size, we can also bump this up to 30. Hit enter there. For fill, we'll choose a solid fill. And again, we'll use that same light gray color here. And then for border, we're going to choose no line. So as you can see now, this has uh, got our gray series looking pretty good, uh, close to the original. And we just need to take those same steps for the complete series. So up here, we'll go to series uh, complete, and then that's going to uh, change all of our options over here for that series. So again, uh, we can start here at marker, we can go back to line, just repeat those steps, solid line. In this case, I wanna choose a green color. You can choose whatever color you want here. Uh, we'll do the same width for 10. And then for marker, same thing here. Options built in. Here we did 30. We'll do a solid fill here, same color. We'll choose the same green color and then a no line for the border. And as you can see now, we really have the kind of bones here of the steps chart. So the next thing we'll do is add our data labels. And for that, we're gonna go up to the format tab. Uh, from the drop down here, we're going to choose series gray. And then over here on the chart elements, if you don't see that, just click, click the plus. Under data labels here, we're going to go down to more options. And we'll go over to the right side here under label options, we'll go to label options. And here we're going to choose value from cells. We'll click that box and that's going to prompt us for a range here to select a range because the default is just showing us the value from the gray column, which we don't really want. What we actually want is this steps column here. So I'm just going to select all of the cells in this column and then hit OK. And as you can see now, it's displaying the step. It's also displaying the value. So we'll get rid of that by unchecking this box. We'll also uncheck show leader line and we'll put the label position in the center of the marker. And now you can see that we have each step here displayed in the marker. And then we might also wanna change this text to make it a little larger. So we'll go to home tab here. We can just change that to something like 16, make it bold. And then I originally had the text as white. Of course, that's totally a personal preference on how you want to uh, format that. And then next, we're going to get rid of the axis. Now, before we do that, I right click it, choose format axis. And then over here in the task pane, under the bounds, the minimum we can leave at zero, but the maximum, instead of 1.2, which is an automatic one, we're gonna type in a two there and hit enter. And what that's gonna do is just center this vertically. So you can see now our chart is just centered vertically and we can actually resize it. So now that we have that, we can go back here to the elements menu and just uncheck axes. We don't need either of those. We can also uncheck grid lines to just really clean this up. And then as you can see here, if you just select kind of above or below the chart, you'll get the plot area here. And that's the entire plot area for the chart. So we can now just make this chart smaller, just vertically smaller, and it'll just kind of resize there as well. And then of course you can uh, rename the title here. We'll just put uh, steps progress for now, but of course you could rename this and you can also uh, remove the title if that's your preference. So that completes the basic setup. Let's take a look at how to modify and use the chart. So the first thing is we have the number of steps complete over here. And of course we can just change this. And when we do that, the formulas will recalculate and display those results in the chart. Now, if you have more than six steps, you, since we're using an Excel table here, what we can do is just hover the mouse over the bottom right corner until it turns into those arrows, left click and hold, and then drag it down. So we'll just drag it down to add a few rows. Since we're using formulas in each column here, those formulas will be copied down and automatically calculated as well. So now we have nine steps in our chart. Again, you can of course test this out. So we'll just hit an eight here for the number complete, hit enter, and that's going to update the chart. Now, if that's starting to get a little crowded, you can also reduce the size of the markers, or you could potentially just make the chart wider uh, to make this look a little better. And then of course, if you want to reduce the number of steps, you just select the rows here that you want to remove, uh, right click, delete, 
uh, table rows, keyboard shortcut is control minus, and that will remove those and again, refresh the chart. And finally, we'll take a look at a few ways to implement this chart. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I have this checklist here on the checklist sheet. And when I check one of the items here, that's going to display that progress here in the steps chart. And the way I'm accomplishing this is I have a few hidden columns here. And the first is this column of true and false values that are just linked to the text boxes over here. So when I check the text box, that's going to change this to a true value. And then I have this formula here, which is just doing a sum of these values times one, because a true times one will return a one, and a false times one will return a zero. So that's just summing all those up to give us this result right here of six. And then over here on this steps checklist sheet, I have the exact same uh, chart that we just did all the setup work for. And what I have here is this uh, cell right here is just linked back over to the checklist sheet with that value. And so again, anytime the changes are made, this uh, chart will update. And the nice part is, is you can just copy these charts to other sheets. So all I did was hit Control C here, select the chart, hit Control C, go over to this sheet, just paste it somewhere, and then all of that updates again as I check off these items here. And I do have a separate video that explains how to create these checklists with these form controls here for these checkboxes. I'll put a link in the description below to that video. And on the expense report sheet, we have a slightly different setup. So here we have an expense report or a form that employees are filling out with our progress. Over here again, I have these hidden columns with some formulas. And essentially what these formulas are doing, they're using the count a function to really count blanks here, if there's any cells that are blanks. If it, with count A, if it's not blank, it's going to return a one and count the value. So it's just counting the value of all four of those cells and saying equals four. If all of those contain a value, four will equal four and that will return a true. Down here where we have a false, we're counting these two cells here. And since the notes field does not have any value in it, it's not gonna count that, it'll just return a one. One does not equal two, so then it's going to return a false. And then the other thing I did here, instead of summing those up, we can actually have uh, skip steps. So for example, if this field was blank and this uh, section two returns a false, that's going to return a false here. And as you can see, it also has the step uh, not complete here. And for that, if we go over to the expense report sheet, all I'm doing there is just the same if statement that we used previously, but I'm just tying those or linking those to each of those true false values on that expense report sheet. So if it does uh, return a true, then we're gonna return a one here. If it returns a false, we're gonna return an NA error, and that will uh, display those specific values on the steps chart. And of course, you can move all of those formulas over from the expense report sheet here, so you can get rid of those extra columns. But I'm curious to know what you'll be using the steps chart for. So leave a comment below and let us know how you're going to be using this. And I will also be creating a tutorial on all of the other different types of progress charts here. So make sure to get subscribed to our channel and get notified when those new videos are published. You can also head over to excelcampus.com free to join our free Excel Pro Tips newsletter. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.